hear your um, engine pad on, on pleasure um, for <laughs> the business. Okay. What, what about Japan? Did you, did you find traffic enough to uh, not come here? Well, I, I, I primarily came because of business, really, but instead of coming for one week or ten days,
over people like Daniel Miller who started you, Jeff Travis who started the wrong trade, insofar as I had a business background as well as like a creative background. And I, I knew something about running a record company, whereas most of the independents that started in the 78 knew rough trade, in the factory later, um, and a lot, of, a lot of ones that then disappeared. They were run by very inexperienced, lots of enthusiasm, but unfortunately there was not a business experience there. And I, you know, I had that, I had that advantage. Well, when I started, the trailer it was just me. I was just a one-man business for two years. And uh, the first record that I did, which did quite well, was I did, I did a, a compilation of 14, a compilation album of 14 really interesting independent singles. And I had Thomas Lear, Throbby Bristol, UK Subs, Shape of things to come. 
kind of image of being very independent, but not doing all the obvious independent things. So, what were the obvious independent things you keep on mentioning? Well, okay, what most of the independent labels were doing punk bands or bands that were coming out of the punk situation, and on singles wise, we had our, our fair share, our first. Oh dear, our first two singles are deleted now. Our first band was called The Tights. Um, that, yeah, that was in English. Most of them, all the, nearly all the British independents were putting out British music. We were putting out some British music, but an equal amount of, uh, of foreign music. And we had three singles by a band from Detroit called Destroy All Monsters. They came out of the ashes of... Uh, Stooges and uh, the MC5. Uh, we brought them over. They were the first American band to have a, a, a British independent remote tour, and they at least walked on Lake at the time with their guitars, and we got the tour together. You know, like we were just we were just trying to do it in a different way. So in other words, you didn't pigeonhole yourself like the other uh, independents did. You didn't just put an emphasis on punk or just on what people were calling the calling new wave at the time. You try to broaden your horizons. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that I was pitching on themselves. They were doing things in their style, and you know, it just seemed to me that if if I was going to have my own label, what I wanted to do was to do it had the independent style, but just do different things from other people. So we were unique because you know. I, you know, based on, I come from administration background, I'm an accountant, uh, you know, I'm not a record producer. Most of the other independents were run by record producers or people who knew all about music. I didn't. So in a way, I, I had to do it a different style. Hmm. Well, you kind of have to hear.
structure and he wanted to make a solo album and um, you know I said to him well if you, if you do a solo album you've got to do it in a very unique independent way so I hired him this equipment and he's, he was just living in a flat in in London I hired him this equipment this 16 track desk and um, he recorded this album now we called it the hybrid kids and the idea was to to pretend that there was 14 different bands and we gave it was like a compilation album and each band had a different name in fact it was all in and each one had a different style it was all cover versions done in a crazy way and like in a way that was that were, on the face of it it didn't fit into anything that a British independent was doing but the fact he actually made the album for 25 pounds because that's he just you know can't hide it behind it with a little steam truck but and the day all it really cost was apart from the hire was the 25 pounds um, 25 pounds for the, the recording tape and that album sold like sold 12 15 thousand you know it was a real cart word of mouth album and so that in a, that, that in a way had a that had its totally unique style and he did a follow-up which was bread 11 called claws which was similar idea but that was destroying all the well-known christmas songs and we just we just did lots of lots of very different projects like that and a trailer and image just grew with that but then we started around here bread 13 we signed Alice in Gaza who was just released their fifth album six years later still working with them that was a very low budget album and that sold very well and then we just had kind of all kinds of experiments um, then we had another one that was totally off the wall was this we had we have a Mark Bonin album here yeah. and Mark Bonin was dead by this time many years previously and his old manager Simon Napier Bell who now manages Wham I think probably very big in Japan too he had these demo tracks of Mark Bonin before Mark Bonin had a record deal and like uh, he said oh I've got these great demo tracks of Mark Bonin and I thought, oh, we're not going to put out demos of Mark Bonin, I like Mark Bonin. And he said, no, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put amazing backing tracks in the style that Mark Bonin would have done and would have liked. And he did it, and it's an amazing album. And we get letters from Mark Bonin fans saying how good the album is. And there again, no British independent would have done that, but for us, somehow it worked. It was a Cherry Red project, and that, that got in the charts, that was a chart album. And we signed Kevin Coyne, who used to be on Virgin, and we did I think, two or three albums by him. Um, we signed The Passage, who used to be on Virgin, did, did two albums by them. Then we did uh, Bread 32, it's misunderstood, Bread 32. There, that was a 60s psychedelic band, who were a real cult band, never really broke, but we did a compilation album of their best tracks that did very well. And we were combining that with British bands like the Monochrome Set, Tracy Thorne's first solo album, that's just one of everything but the girl. Uh, that album was a distant short. The recording budget for that was £138. I said to her, how much, how much do you, would it take to make an album? She said £150. And she came in for £138. She had to take a taxi for her home as well. Well, I thought she got the bus out of it, actually. <laughs> And that album has sold 60,000 around the world now. Is that it's right? Like, <laughs> it still sells and sells and sells. It's done 10,000 in Japan, you know. It sells and sells and sells. Um, you know, we, we found Tracy Thorne through the Marine Girls. We signed the Marine Girls, we're all girl band. She was part of that band. Right? Yeah, there was four girls. And then one of them left, there was three girls. They did, a, they did a, one album for somebody else, and an album for us. Yes. And she came out of that. Then um, we introduced her to Ben Watt, who she'd never met, who we had uh, signed as a solo artist. We'd done a couple of singles with him, and they fell in love with each other. <laughs> we were in dating service, <laughs> and um, they and, and they met. And they made an album, and uh, in fact, they met. They made a single, First Night and Day which was very unusual for a, an, an independent record. It was a cover of a Cole Porter song, a very old Cole Porter song. It was a very soft ballad, acoustic ballad. Very unusual for independent to release. And it was quite a, 
successful. And it was that that whole created the whole, helped to create the whole, balanced the whole movement behind everything but the girl. And uh, they eventually signed to Warner Brothers for the world, although we kept the rights for Japan, which I read. Um, so there was, there was, what, what would happen was, we'd get, like any independent label, we'd get people coming to the office all the time, and rather saying, this fits into our structure, you know, we'll do it. We'd look at any project we really liked and say, and say well, we like it, yeah, it'll fit in, and we'll just do it, you know. If we felt, if we felt we liked it, we felt it was right, without being, having too rigid a structure, too rigid an image, we'd, we'd do it. And uh, we were, yeah, Cherry Red has gone through many different phases. Um, we started off doing the punk thing, Destroy Our Monsters, the Dick Kennedys, a couple of English punk bands, the Michael Bratz. And then we went through very much more an acoustic phase with Tracy Thorne, Ben Watt, Kevin Coyne, people like that. And, um, phases, Trey Red. We've, um, you, you commented earlier on, on, on the suite, well, we also, we also now have other labels, this is all our catalogue, but we have also Anagram Records, and we started Anagram about, um, must have been about four years ago, when Trey Red label was going through its kind of acoustic phase, and there was, um, we always had a very active music publishing company, which we will come on to later. And uh, we had all these bands that were much too hard arranged for Trey Red at that time. We liked to be involved with them. We liked to put records out by them. So we started Anagram Records. And we had One Way System, The Vibrators we signed from CBS, The Angelic Upstarts were on a major, on Polydor, we signed them from Polydor. Alien Sex Fiend were new bands, they were Turkey Bones. And so we built up Anagram Records. And Alien Sex Fiend, as you probably know, came to Japan last year. And uh, um, went down reasonably well. I mean, uh, it was, was a fourth album by then. So we built up we built up Anagram the same way. The way the suite came about, mentioned the suite, which is down here somewhere. What happened there was, was that one of the guys in our A&I department, he, he said to me, you know, a lot of the, the clubs, they're playing sweet records all the time. Like Alien Sex would be playing live and they'll play a sweet old sweet record. And the sweet used to be on RCA and after that Polydor. And no one had bothered to put a compilation album of all the sweet, sweet hits out in England. So we licensed the rights from RCA and Polydor. We put the album out straight into the top 50, you know, it's like, it didn't throw very well up for us. And again, that kind of fitted into what we're doing because it was a unique project to do that no one else was doing. And we gave it a contemporary sleeve and uh, that album still sells very well for us. And the suite reformed after that. And they're doing two of Australia, so we encouraged them to reform and everything. So,
あとは落ちていく、うん、それであの今度もうちょっとハードなものを出そうと思ってその新しいアナグラムレコードを設立した、うん、だから結構いろんな変化が減ってきてるてう、うん、そうすると日本で一応にとらわれてるねそのアコースティックのハイゼンスな音楽というふうなポストパンクというのかなアンチパンクというのかそういう認識というのはじゃあどっちかちょっとおかしいわけだ、um, What do you think of this idea there? In Japan, there's a tends to be a recognition of the cherry red label as sort of an anti punk,、um, kind of a refined acoustic sound. It's、uh, interpreted as that cherry red name. That doesn't make much sense now, though, does it? Because、uh, I guess you have kind of branched out, and、uh, the label is not something completely、really、different. So, it's a bit of 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 a
I said earlier, the true image isn't. We're not like you see, certain labels like Factory and 4AD, and they have kind of kind of master plans. And everything is really thought out. That's fine. I'm not saying that is wrong, but that isn't for us. But we tend to we just see how things develop. Um, one of our the true red label itself is quite quiet at the moment, and we have. The person that used to be the A and R person for Cherry Red, a person called Mike Orway, he's the person that introduced Ben Watt and Tracy Thorne and everything that the girl was born from that. He was the person that signed Felt and Alice in Gaza. I've now given him his own label called L Records, which is through Cherry Red. And uh, he's he's signed a series of acts here, none of which you'll have heard of apart from the monochrome set. Bid, who's a singer from the Monogram set. But everybody else is a new act. And it's, you know, it's like we're starting all over again with the new Felts, the new artists in Gaza. And he has a very distinctive sound. And he's very image conscious. And I'm just going to let him build up Bill Records the way that he wants to. And I trust that, that you know, one day he will get one, at least one act to the stage that everything with the girl are at now. So, I see, I see Cherry, I haven't talked about the publishing either, but I see Cherry Red more as a, a, a very independent politically, but creatively it has different areas to it. The Cherry Red label is only, is only one area, only one part of that. We have, we have the Anagram label I've talked about. We have the Zebra label I've touched on, which is the rock label. We have L Records, where we've probably got more releases coming up in the future there than the Cherry Red label. We have other bits and pieces, like we have a, a reissue label called Time Stood Still, we've done a couple of things on. Um, we have an African, African label we did some albums on. So we have, we have various sides of Cherry Red. With the publishing, where we are, we have 6,000 songs now in our publishing company. It is the fastest growing in, uh, British independent uh, music publisher. And we publish, I th again, I don't know how, Word on this act, sorry, in Japan, we published the Ver, they were on CBS, uh, Terror Plane, who were on CBS. We published Blumange, who were on, uh, who were on London, who've had quite a few hits in England. Uh, well, obviously, we published everything but the girl. Um, we, we published until we were released with Mel's Davis coming along from the UK. So, our publishing company is very varied. Uh, we also published most of the acts on Creation Records. Uh, we have a very strong link with Creation. Creation used to have a Jesus and Mary train. Jane, they had a bank with the Weather Prophets, which I personally think are great. We publish a bank with the Apartments who have a train. We have, we have a very strong interest in the publishing side as well. So it's like, I think when you talk about Cherry Red, you, know, you just don't talk about the Cherry Red label. You have to look at the publishing company, Anagram, Zebra, L Red. All the other bits and pieces that we do. We've also done a few films that two have been released in Japan. We did uh, a film called UKDK, which is a, a kind of semi documentary about punk music in the UK. We did a Cherry Red video called Pillars and Prayers. Uh, we, there was an alien sex theme video which was shot uh, in Tokyo, which we put out. And we've got, we've got some other projects we're thinking about on the film side as well. So we're kind of, uh, you know, you know Richard Branson from Virgin. He's got some, you know, he's into recording studios, and breaking speed records, and all kinds of things. I wouldn't compare us to Richard Branson, but in the same way, Virgin isn't just a record label. Cherry Red is, is more than just a Cherry Red label. あ、ロボットだと。うん、そう、基本的にそういうことなんだけども、まずこのチェイレッドっていうのは非常に流動的に扱ってる。だから チェリエットそのものから何が出てきてもいいと思う。他の流動的じゃないんだそれほど。だ、他はね、割とこう、なんていうかな、それぞれのカテゴリーをフィットした形で、なるほどね。え、分けてるわけよね。で、縦横のエ
で作ったんだけど要するに作らせたわけよね、うん、で彼をもう完全にこう任してるんだよね、うん、このいろレコード、うん、だからもう一つの何、うんえー、ていうか「エブリスイング・ダッツ・ア・ガール」に匹敵する、うん、人気を、うんえー、集められるバンドは、まあ、出てくればいいと思ってる、うん、その制作かつての制作部長に任せてる<笑>だからまあその他にねその出版業にもかなり手広くね扱、えー、るし扱ってるし会社説明会に来たみたいなあ、うん、あいうのえー、これだけいろんな事業やるようになってまあチェリーレッドレコードもすごく成長したというか成功して商業的にも成功してると思うんですけども、えー、そのチェリーレッドレコードを一番最初に起こした時にここまで来るというふうに思いましたんですかそれとその成功した要因原因というのは今分析すると何になりますでしょう When you first started the label,、uh, had you any idea that you would、uh, end up with such a, a vast array of、uh, successful businesses? And looking back in retrospect,、uh, what do you、uh, attribute the success to? <laughs> Two questions. Well,、um, in a way, I suppose when I started, I wanted to be more successful than I am now. It's like this was eight years ago. And、uh, yeah, I suppose in a way I wanted, I wanted to build a bigger organization and、uh, I wanted to have lots of hit records and everything else. And maybe be like a new version of New Christmas. I was very ambitious. As I said earlier, I started, when I, when I started, I just had £2,000, which isn't very much. And I worked from home for two years. So it was very much working step by step. And I think the way it's turned out. Has been, hasn't been planned at all. It's just, it's just taken its course. It's gone through different stages. We've gone through periods we've done very well. We've done, gone through quite some periods. And、uh, it's turned out fine, you know. It's,、um, we're still very small. We only have, in the office, we have eight people. It's not a very big operation. Good size because people know each other's jobs and, like, okay, I'm in Japan, the other main person is in the music seminar in New York this week. But the office still functions without it, so though it's small, it still operates without the main two people there. And、um, as I say, in a way, I suppose eight years ago I wanted to be much more successful by the state. It's not to say I'm disappointed. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't worked out as I planned on that level, but it's, it's fine the way it's worked out. You know? Why hasn't it worked out the way you wanted it to, though?、Like、well, it's worked because I've changed during that time. You know, I've changed as a person. I, went different, I have different priorities in life than I had eight years ago. And,、uh, um, you know, if we started to get into this, we'd get into a whole new era. It's a ch- cherry red organization at the moment. It's for me now exactly what I want. And in a way, it's reflected, it's reflected me because I own the company. I've always, although I've had good people, I've always been a decision maker. And it reflects what I want now. If, if what I want from life is different in two years' time, cherry red will, will,、uh, will change to reflect what I want then. <laughs> <laughs> その設立当時というのはね、その目標っていうのは、それこそバーデンとかクリサルスみたいなね、ヒット曲がポンポン出るような会社を作りたかった。で、その個人的な変化をいろいろと出てきてね、で必然的にその、えー、会社のね、方向性もそれに、もうなんていうのかな、沿って変わったわけ。だから、まあ今の現状にはそれなりに満足してはいるんです。僕はもっと巨大な組織を作れたわけでも現状商業的にも成功してるんでしょ Um, it still it is commercially very successful as it is right now. Yeah, it is, yeah. You know, the, our biggest, our biggest act we're involved in is everything with a girl. Although we don't have recording rights for anywhere but Japan. The, the last album was top 10 in, in the UK. They did very well in lots of Europe and also they took America last year. Hopefully, they're coming to Japan. 
made sure that she arrived next year. It's not definite. But, you know, one, another one of the reasons why I've come to Japan is to talk to promoters and meet people to see the viability of bringing the band over to Japan. Everything but the girl have a new album, which is coming out here. should be at the end of August, which is a very, very good album. Um, and that would do very well in the UK, obviously, if they come to Japan, maybe do. Well, well, maybe, maybe you know, what I would like is everything but the girl to, to have a top 40 album in Japan, but I realize they probably have to come here before they can achieve wow. that. We have, you know, we have, um, maybe I could just talk for comments about L Records, I, I did mention it briefly before. L Records is, is for us a very exciting project we're putting a lot of our resources into that. As I said earlier, the Cherry Red release schedule is fairly quiet at the moment. L Records, we've got a lot of records coming out. We've got, in fact, next week we have five singles out on L. We're putting a lot of time and energy into that. And I see L Records as a very brave move because, as I was talking about when I started Cherry Red in the early years, Cherry Red wasn't doing what the other independents are doing. L Records is totally different from any other British independent. No one else is putting out records like we're putting it out. We are putting out quite soft records, maybe in the old Cherry Red tradition. Um, you know, one of the things that's happening in England at the moment is a lot of the the new bands that come to the independent system sound like the Buzzcocks. Remember the Buzzcocks? Yeah, sure. But they sound very much like them. Mm -hmm. And now. You know, I have got a cassette, which I can't leave you back and maybe play you in a minute, for some of the new L singles, and they're very, they're very unique, and it's going to be a lot of hard work, and it's going to take time, and obviously I hope that somebody, I don't know whether it'll be available for someone else, but somebody in Japan, will put out L records here, and, and so the Japanese people have the opportunity to listen to L records, but I would say that, you know, our priority for the future, is, is certainly everything but the girl, and also L records. Yeah, everything but the girl. I don't know if you know this, but they have the same they have the same producer as Charlie Robin Miller, and he actually started to work with everything but the girl before he started to work with Charlie. So it's quite a I know Charlie and Peter Act are aware of that, but it's quite interesting because there is obviously similarity to the sound or sound between Charlie. But on Cherry Road we have um we have do a couple of commercials there. We have uh you know, we signed a band called the Meteors who this will be on an anagram in fact. And they have a single album coming out in the next couple of months. We've signed a band band called Mood Six to Cherry Road, which they used to be on EMI about two or three years ago. They're very acoustic. They're, I suppose they're a typical cherry type band. So they've got a single album coming out in September. We've got Alien Sex Feet single album coming out. We've got a felt CD coming out. Um, and the rest of the stuff is really, it's really L releases. So, you know, L is the main thing for us at the moment. Did you want to hear a cassette of some of the stuff very quickly? Yeah, I don't want to ask some cassette of that. He's got to get back to the office, but he'll, you know, yeah, he looks forward to, to hearing it. I'll get, I'll get Fab to make you a cassette copy. So, it's your dubbing or on a textbook copy? Yeah, I'm going to see that. Yeah, I'll be good. He's always been very interested in uh, the cherry red, so right. uh, that's a definite priority of his as well. あの、
this subject sort of came up spontaneously, but there seems to be sort of a, uh, a backlash towards, towards punk uh, in Britain, I suppose, in the last few years, and thus the birth of the new acoustic sound, as they call it. Um, what do you think of this? Uh, People have called it more so like Neil hit me. Yeah. yeah. Well, okay. I've, I've very definite views on this. Basically, when punk started in 76, 77, you know, we always talked about it down here, it was kind of it was kind of a protest movement. But in a way it was a kind of fashion protest movement. It came out of London. And obviously Mark Mark and McLaren was one of the Instigators of it, and it wasn't a working class movement at all. But it was—it was more against one of the things that it really changed was the whole structure of the music industry in Britain. A lot of the major companies wouldn't put out punk records apart from the bigger bands, and so the independent, so the independent record label started, independent distribution started, independent marketing started. And there was a whole. There was a whole network of independent operations that was set up to handle punk music, which was fantastic because it, an alternative was created. That was the first stage of punk. The punk went through a kind of uh, a second phase around 8081, and then you had you had bands like. much more working class sort of movement. Those bands were not primarily London based bands and based outside London. They came from the high unemployment areas and they were really angry lyrics by angry people. These were kids that were leaving school at 15 and not only couldn't get a job but probably would never get a job in their life. And they were angry. They were making angry music. And for me that was Although I love 77, 76, etc., I love that. The punk thing of 8081 was a far more genuine working class expression of frustration. And now you're right, punk in England is on the decline. You know, the bands like Crass and Conflict are still around, Test Tube Babies are still around, they're still playing gigs. The rest of the following that it had, and what I don't think there is, there isn't. There is a music movement now that generally reflects the frustration of, of, of people in Britain. You know, that frustration of like, no job, no home is not around. And I think the more acoustic type bands that are coming out, like I mentioned to the Buscock sound the likes, and there's a band called We've Got Fuzzbox, we're going to use, use it, I wouldn't say they're acoustic. But it's kind of a fun thing. I just think, I just think personally, I may be wrong, but I think personally in the next two years something new is going to come out. I think, although Cherry Red's basically involved in what we find interesting and worthwhile projects, I don't think there is a movement with passion out there at the moment. I know it's not in England. And I think something else will come out. And I think it's going to be even more angry than the last phrase of the book. Because there is a lot of unemployed, angry people there. When, when you were in a car, you know, I'm fortunate I've created a situation where I have a job that I like. But God, if I was a kid at 15, 16, 17, 18, 20, 21, I couldn't get a job, my God, I'd be angry, you know? I feel very alienated. And this is not being expressed in music. And it has to come. Well, you talk about, uh, you know, why people started to the punk book. Why did they start getting into this acoustic stuff? A very I don't know. example. I don't know. I, you know, I don't, I don't have an answer on that. Yes. I think, um, really, music, the point, point about protest music is it changes. You know, you can't have the same protest music year after year after year. You know? I know Joan Byers did it for a few years in Bob Dylan. 
that somehow in the 80s are about, they're about very quick change. And I think the protest scene in Britain is just going to go into a very stagnant period. And I think it will re-emerge. And when it does re-emerge, it will be far more potent than it was before. Um, yeah, there are a lot of unemployed kids that are into heavy metal. Heavy metal, I suppose, like in Japan, has always been, has always been there. And there's unemployed kids, I guess, that are into Madonna and pop music as well. You know? But somehow, there's a void there. I think the void will be filled. One that the conditions of society right now and the and it's very similar to the way uh, they were right before the contract. Yeah, that's right. People have given up, the moment, but they won't, you know, they'll come back. We have to have you know, almost a fascist government in Britain, you know, where people are going to be right in government. People will get back in it, you know. The protest, the political protest is very weak too. You know,
stands out having a big review which is slightly not off very negative it's review and it makes people aware I don't care what they really say I'm just saying something you, know. you get equal coverage in all the magazines or is it just the, the NMEs and the sounds and I think well record mirror well yeah, the record mirror is probably good for stuff um, they're all good for us they're all good for us I'll tell you we do get some press news on number one, smash it stuff, the show all for the team of yeah. the kids, yeah. But we're not keeping the press wars. We get we get terrible radio play. Okay? We can only yeah. ever get the radio play, but we get good press now. Is that right? Terrible radio. Do you think that the BBC would be pitching stuff up? BBC does what I call valiant music to keep the mass, you know, tranquilized oh, music. No. To keep the to keep the masses tranquilized. I wish someone would give more official record feeling to Japan. Oh, well. 
Where would you ever perform it? Um, I could find out a few. I don't carry it, but I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, he's working part time as a copywriter for Interbrand. That is what he does do. He's working part time for that. But he basically wants to make more records. Mm. One thing I would try and do is try and help get a record deal out. Because I think he's living here because he decided to jump in his company. Mm -hmm. he, he did rec recall them out for. Uh, Serious records, serious records. They call Look at Life, which is great. But I think, I think it's a lot of fun for me. Thanks, sir. Right. And I'm, there, there are not that many uh, successful in that way. That's what I'm finding out, yeah. I've got a meeting with uh, Portrait on Monday. Uh -huh. I'm not sure if it's very good. Uh -huh. well, Japanese market is just notorious in the TV population. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It's yeah. I think a lot of people find cherry red. Uh, a lot of people kind of trying to get away from that. And it's probably a pretty diverse market. I don't know what you've heard of. I think we probably spend everything from 12 year olds to 30 people in the mid 40s. Really? That's interesting. Kid bulls. Why is that? I'm a cold guy. I'm a cherry red. I don't know if you want me to get a cold guy. So, how are you doing that? Mm, so,